What's up painting friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stoof. Today we're going to do an acrylic painting tutorial for this nice little pineapple at the beach. And in that first picture I could not take you to the beach, but I took you to my pool. So, <laughs> hope you guys are having a great summer so far. Alright, for this painting we're going to use acrylic paints. We're starting out with titanium white, burnt umber, yellow ochre, phthalo blue, sap green, Thalo green, bright aqua green, pink, sky blue, primary yellow, flesh tint, burnt sienna, magenta, cadmium yellow medium, and black. I believe I'm using a 12 inch by 16 inch canvas panel here. To get started with the painting, I am just working on the background, everything behind the pineapple first. So I'm using a large angled brush. If you have a flat tip brush, that would work as well. And we're just starting to mix some of that blue with the white, mostly white. We want to have a nice light background here. And I'm just making back and forth brush strokes, trying to cover up that canvas, adding a little bit more blue in there just to add a bit more saturation and continuing those back and forth brush strokes, really like thickly laying on that paint so that it takes a little bit longer to dry and I'll have a little bit more time to blend as I continue to work on this background. Now I'm taking some of that bright aqua green and starting to blend that in with my white as we're getting into the shallow part of the sea there, we can get a little bit more green in our palette. Starting to add that aqua green all through the top part of the canvas, just blending it very smoothly into the colors that I already have. Now as we get even closer to the shore, we start to get little bits of purple in our visibility, so we, I started to add a little bit of magenta there, just a tiny little bit, and I just kept going back and forth with my brush strokes, continuing to add magenta and a little bit of burnt umber now, a little bit of black just to dull that down, and some ochre to bring it warm because we can start to see the sand color as well. Starting to add some of that under the canvas and blending that up with my back and forth brush strokes so that it has a nice smooth transition into the wet paint already on the canvas above it. Just keeping those nice swift back and forth brush strokes. Uh, the way that I'm pressing onto the canvas, I'm not like pressing so hard that it's getting the metal part of the brush in there, but I am pressing pretty hard. I'm not like super lightly pressing. I do press a little bit lighter when I want to blend, but when I first get that paint on there, I'm just trying to really thickly throw that on the canvas. And as we keep moving down, we're starting to incorporate more and more browns and reds. So we're getting that warm brown, more magenta, more burnt umber. And I'm just trying to fill in all of that white space, not leaving any little white spaces on the canvas and continuing to make my way from the top to the bottom, from sea to shore. Here we have lots of magenta and burnt umber. Just continuing to work my way up blending very softly. If you're new to blending, it helps to take the excess paint off your brush when you want to blend up into the color above it. You don't want to have too, too much paint on your brush or else it's just going to overpower whatever you're trying to blend into. Just try to keep those nice, smooth back and forth brush strokes. Here I'm basically just using my yellow ochre with my burnt sienna. And this is more of the dry part, or it, may, it might be a little bit wet, but it's not underwater. <laughs> this part of the sand here is at the bottom of the canvas. It's just my warm brown, my white, and my yellow ochre. And I'm just covering all of the white space on the canvas, continuing those back and forth brush strokes and trying to make a nice smooth transition so that I don't have any like chunky blocks of color. I want to have a nice smooth transition of color. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So I let that layer dry for about a half hour, and now I'm ready to start adding some detail to the painting. So now I'm using a medium-sized angled brush, and I'm going to start by just sketching out the outline of the pineapple. So I'm looking at how big I want my pineapple to be. I'm looking at, okay, this is the midpoint halfway between up and the bottom and the top of the canvas, and I want the top of my pineapple fruit piece to be below the midpoint so that I can have a nice big long stalk of the leaf uh, stem pieces that come out of the pineapple. Now for the shape of the pineapple, it helps to do a little crosshair like I did there, that little cross in the middle, uh, just to give you a good middle point on your pineapple. And you want to have a little bit rounded edges on the sides and a little bit rounded at the bottom. It's basically an oval shape, but like a little bit more square, chunky looking than a perfect oval. <laughs> And I'm just using green for the base here. I'm going to end up painting over this with more colors later. For the leaves, or the little stems coming out from the top of the pineapple, they are short at the base and they get longer at the top. So I'm just kind of filling in some space and adding a couple little guys sticking out from the sides here. And everything's basically in shadow right now. I'm just using my sap green and just getting all of the leaves sketched out first and then we'll go back and add some color and some more detail later. And when you're sketching out your leaves uh, coming out of the top of the pineapple, they don't really come too far out from either side of the base of the pineapple. So if you look at your uh, oval for the base of the pineapple, you want to make sure that when you're painting your leaves from the top of the pineapple that they're not really extending out beyond the sides of the base. And then we also want to try to keep this pineapple centered on the painting. Uh, you, you're welcome to put it to the side if you'd like. If you'd like to see more of the water and have the pineapple more on the side, you could do that. Uh, but I put mine in the center and I want it to be centered from top to bottom as well. So think about how tall your uh, little leaves coming out of the top of the pineapple are going to be. And try to leave the same amount of space between the top of your leaves and the base of your pineapple. And that just gives you a nice centered pineapple, drawing everyone's attention right in on that pineapple in the middle of your canvas. Alright, so now we're looking at the detail on the pineapple. If you look at my picture there, the pineapple basically has cross diagonal lines going from left to right, starting high on the left and going down on the right, just like I'm painting here. And then they basically just have a crisscross on the opposite side. They uh, like perpendicularly intersect each other. So <laughs> you have these angled lines on this side and then the next set of angled lines just go the opposite direction, perpendicularly crossing the lines you just painted. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines there, so you're welcome to make your uh, little uh, detailed pieces a little bit thicker or smaller if you want. I wouldn't go too much smaller than this though with your little squares that we're creating here. If you look closely, I believe the pineapple these little squares that I just made actually turn into like a pentagon shape, uh, but we're, do we're starting out with a square and then we start to add more detail that brings it a little bit more to life later. But just to like break it down and make it easier to figure out what the heck is going on with this pineapple, <laughs> we're doing these diagonal lines that create these little diamond square shapes. Next, I started to fill in the shadows in these squares so I noticed that each of these little pentagon or diamond shapes has a dark green top and then it's a little bit more yellow and brown towards the base of each of these little spots. So I started by just filling in the tops with my sap green mixed with phthalo blue and some burnt umber. And our sunlight source is going to be 
uh, obviously above and a little bit behind well it's pretty far behind the pineapple I guess that the Sun would be setting over the water far off in the distance on the left side of the canvas so the left top part of the pineapple is going to be a little bit lighter than the rest of the pineapple and then the bottom right of the pineapple is going to be more in shadow because the Sun is on the opposite side of it and then that's also going to end up casting a shadow on the lower right side uh, coming from the pineapple off the bottom of the canvas at an angle just so that we uh, are aware of this you know thinking about where our light source is while we're painting this pineapple Here I'm starting to add the deep shadows to the uh, branches coming out from the top of the pineapple and we have a mix of sap green, phthalo blue, and burnt umber. It gives us a really dark cool green. You want to use a little bit more blue in here uh, in that blend so that you get a nice good shadow. And I'm just starting with almost straight lines at the very bottom and then you can start to see I'm starting to create the shapes of these little stalks uh, where we get a little bit more of a jagged top like almost like a triangle shape which builds into a longer and longer triangle until it just looks like you know a long stem and the shadows get a little bit lighter as we're getting closer to the top of that uh, leafy part of the pineapple and we get a little bit more space in between the shadows as we move higher up as well and since we're using acrylic paint now is a great time to let that base color of the pineapple sit and dry while we work on the background some more so I'm blending my white with a little bit of my ultramarine blue and black and it's just giving me a little bit of a cool white. You don't want to use pure white here because this is a base. We're going to add some highlights later that are pure white but to start out mix a little bit of black and blue into your white and we're starting to add the little tiny bubbly wave that is right behind the pineapple crashing onto the beach. And I basically just did that little outline shape first and next I'm going to go in with that color I made and just fill that in completely from top to bottom there. And that's my nice little wave full of little bubbles. And it's not a perfectly straight line, it kind of like meanders a little bit. You can use a larger brush there if you'd like. It would make things move a little bit more quickly. I was just, you know, too lazy to clean off my large brush. <laughs> and we're doing the same thing with the right side of the canvas, putting a top and a bottom to that little breaking bubbly wave right behind the pineapple and then filling that in with our cool white color. And we're going to have a shadow right there on the left side of this wave. Uh, right next to, to the pineapple but for now we're just filling in this base color and we'll start to add more shadows and highlights after this layer dries. So we got that main wave right in the foreground, got that nice and filled in, covered up all of the background paint behind it. And the next step is to keep using that smaller flat tipped brush here. You could use a round tip brush for this as well. And you just want to make these little back and forth little like zigzaggy motions and you don't want to put too too much paint on the canvas. It's fine if you let the paint kind of start to dry out and make up this little dry brushing technique that I have going on here where you can see through the paint a little bit. See that background bleeding through just a little uh, because the paint isn't as thick. And this is like the nice little sudsy part of the water uh, following right behind that little bubbly wave at the foreground and this just kind of makes this little zigzaggy back and forth pattern you want to leave some space for the sand below it where you can see through the little bubble suddy sudsy <laughs> pieces and the thickness of your little 
bubble sudsy lines gets thinner as you're moving farther back. So as you see in the foreground, closest to that wave right in the very foreground, my suds are thicker. And then as we move farther back, they're getting a little bit more thin. And that helps to add distance to this painting. If you want to add a little bit of water to your brush uh, with this paint on it, that will also thin the paint down a little as you're making these marks. And as I keep moving back, I'm starting to press more and more lightly so that it's not putting as much paint down and it's just putting a little bit of like a thin glazing of paint on the background there. And so we want that because if you look in the background, the color at the top is our blue, which is a nice light blue, and then it gets darker and more warm as it moves closer to us. So we're going to have more contrast in the foreground anyway, but I want to press lightly in the background here just so that that nice little sudsy part almost fades away out of focus and like out of our attention. It almost blends right into that light blue color. And I, at one point I take off that excess paint on the brush and just kind of let it blend right into that color. So this might be a little bit tough for the beginners to achieve, uh, but with practice, I think you guys can get this. So again, we're starting more with our white, a little bit of black, a little bit of ultramarine blue and just starting with those nice thick sudsy lines, just making these little back and forth motions with the brush, not making anything too particular or perfect, just kind of like scrambling the brush around, making these little zigzaggy motions that's creating the look of these little suds in the wave. Or I guess like, yeah, the water, the water, I wouldn't call it a wave, right? It's just like the water calmly carrying suds after a wave probably just broke, you know? <laughs> I'm better with the painting than the words, guys, so if you're having trouble understanding me, just leave a comment <laughs> and I'll see if I can explain it better. And you want to go right up to the sides of the pineapple. It's okay if you start to go over that green a little bit. Just try not to blend uh, your white in with the green or you're going to start getting green bubbles in the water. We don't want that. And again, as we're getting farther in the background, I'm pressing a little bit more lightly so that it's just ni making a little nice transition into that blue-green watercolor and fading off out of focus and out of our attention. Don't let yourself get too caught up on where to put these little suds. As long as you just let your brush work and you know, just let the brush go without being too controlling of where it's going and it'll end up looking like suds. And if it doesn't, then we can always go back and add a little bit more of that uh, sand brown color in between and that'll bring it back to looking like suds. So there's you're never stuck with acrylic painting. You can always add another layer over what you just painted. All right, so I just mixed a little bit of thala blue with my black, my burnt umber, a little bit of magenta, adding a hint more burnt umber there and I just want to get a really cool shadow color here. So I added a couple more little colors in there and this is going to be my shadow for under the little tiny wave bubble thing. <laughs> and you just want to put those little shadows on the right side and then all the way under the pineapple and Continue onto the right side of the canvas, keeping the 
shadows mostly on the little right sides of each little ripply wave piece. And you can kind of spin your brush as you're putting the paint down and that'll get the paint off the brush on all the sides of the brush where the paint is. Now I'm blending some magenta with my burnt umber, my thalo blue, adding a little bit of white, then adding a little bit of ochre and a little bit of burnt sienna. We just got all kinds of colors going on here. Adding a little bit of flesh tint. Adding that flesh tint kind of brings the saturation down. And now we're adding our shadow, where the pineapple is casting a shadow onto the sand. When you're painting your shadow in, make sure your shadow doesn't go farther to the left of the pineapple unless you're going to move your lighting. So if you want your sun to be directly behind the pineapple, then your shadow is going to come straight towards the viewer down in the center of the canvas. If your sun is going to move to the right side behind the pineapple, then your shadow is going to come on the left side. So just think about where your sunlight is and where it's casting a shadow. You can put the shadow wherever you want. And now for the fun part, which sometimes works and sometimes it doesn't. But for this one, I think it did work. Uh, so I'm just doing a bunch of little specks for the different little mineral grains in the sand. So if you have um, a fan brush or like a larger brush and you want to add, what you could do here is you could dip that in the water and then get your color you're gonna use for your little uh, mineral grains and you just dip that in the water, dip it in the paint and then you hold the brush back and splatter it onto the canvas and that'll also give you those tiny little grainy effect uh, with the little, the little bit of paint that's like sprayed onto the canvas starts to look like little dots for grains of sand. Uh, but I did not use that approach for this one because I already painted the sudsy part and that would also get mineral grains on my sudsy part and I would have to paint over that again. So I decided to do this one, which takes a little bit longer, I think. You have to take a small brush and just dab with a bunch of little dots all over the little sandy part where you want to show sand grains and you use a few different color tones here so you want to use one is yellow ochre with white and that gives us like our nice little highlight mineral lit, lit up part <laughs> and then we use some with more burnt umber and magenta which gives us a little bit more of cooler grain you can mix a little bit of blue with your browns and just try getting a couple warm and cool tones and just keep dabbing little dots all over your sandy bottom here until you get your uh, sand looking more realistic with these, with these nice little grains. It gives you that textured sandy look. And here I'm using another highlight color for the little grains of sand just white with a little hint of either flesh tint or uh, primary yellow and just doing quick little dabs just very loosely holding the brush and letting it just like teeter-totter onto the canvas and adding those little dots Here I'm just mixing a blue with black to get a really deep shadow under that pineapple again and I'm adding some dots really close to the pineapple to get a really deep shadow little specks of sand grains and that basically gets us the sand grains in the foreground next I'm blending some of my blues with black and white and that's giving me a nice cool blue to use for the shadow color on that little bubbly wave <laughs> thing right in the foreground breaking around the pineapple and you just want to put that right there to the right side of the pineapple kind of carrying out down towards the bottom on that side and then we'll add little hints of it on the right side of the waves so that it gives those waves a little bit of dimension now these waves don't look flat anymore now that we have the shadow there they look like they're more three-dimensional and you just 
kind of do uh, those little zigzaggy motions like we did for the sudsy bubbles in the background uh, and you just let that carry and give you your little shadow on the wave in the foreground. Next we're adding a shadow onto the little suds going into the background and we're just using that same cool color maybe adding a hint more black and white so it's a little more gray and less saturated and I'm just going right over the spots that I put in with just that cool white that we made earlier with which was like the white blue and black uh, and this is just like a deeper shadow and I'm trying to put most of these shadows on like the right side of the bubble so that it's still like is realistic with where our light source is. I started to blend some white with my brown and my black and now I'm starting to add little shadows where the bubbles are casting a shadow onto the sand under the water. And this is kind of like it kind of makes a little border. It's a little bit more difficult to explain this part, but it makes like a little border like in each of those little sudsy, sudsy bubbly spots. Wherever there's sand exposed, you want to put that at the contact between where you see the sand color and where you see the little sudsy bubble color. And it doesn't have to be everywhere, but just like, you know, imply it in some spots just to start to build up the depth and make this come to life a little bit more. Here I'm blending in a little bit of brown with my blues and my, my green there and this is giving me a shadow in the far background uh, where we're starting to build up a little bit of depth in the background. Our shadows have more blue in them and green in them back here because we can't quite see that sand color anymore. And I'm just making those zigzag patterns again back and forth, adding a little bit more purple and brown as we're coming closer to the foreground. And now I'm really adding some pops of shadow. <laughs> this is a lot of contrast here, but it ends up bringing it all to life. So we have that brown, make cool brown and warm brown, and there's a little bit of gray and blue in there too. And again, we're just kind of outlining wherever we see the sand touching the bubbles, we put it right around those contact spots and you don't want to completely cover every little contact area but you want to kind of get that in there continuing the zigzaggy pattern so that it's starting to imply some shadows that are cast by the bubbles onto the sand. Now I'm blending in a little more of my yellow and my apricot or flesh tint and now we're going to add a highlight. So we did our shadow first, now we're adding a little highlight here. So I'm just continuing to do that little zigzaggy pattern, putting my highlight in the spot where our sand below the water is visible. And I'm not completely covering up my shadows, but I'm starting to add these little highlights just to keep building up that contrast and making the sand and the little sudsy bubbly waves look more realistic. And you only want to use that yellowy color kind of going up to the middle of the canvas. Then we're going to start to blend in some more purples and whites as we're getting farther back for our shadows back in the distance. Here I am switching back to my large angled brush and I'm getting all of the excess paint off of that brush. I actually just cleaned it so I'm getting all the excess water off that brush too. It's a nice clean dry brush and we are mixing white with our phthalo blue, a little bit of that aqua green, a little bit of black, and a little bit of violet as well. And then we just start to add these nice little waves, I guess. They're not really waves, but it's like there's where there are ripples and it's reflecting the light in the background. This is giving us an even amount of detail in the painting too. We do not want to leave the top completely blank with just that base color. We want to have an equal amount of detail throughout the whole painting so that everything kind of makes sense. All right, so I'm just doing those zigzag patterns like I did before, but using the larger brush and making more broad brush strokes. And now we kind of have the look of a little bit of deeper water in the background. Starting to add some little shadows under the little bubble suds in the background too, using that color. Now 
are mixing white with our aqua green and that's giving us that really nice little highlight. It's mostly white paint back here and I'm just overlapping that right over the shadowy color that I put down and it's okay if you go over the green planty part of the pineapple the leaf stem part because we're gonna be painting over the pineapple leaf part again. We're gonna start adding more detail to the pineapple after the background. So we got that pineapple sketched in just so we knew where it was, but it's okay if you go over that while you're working on your background. Starting to mix a little bit more pink into the mixture. And we're gonna add that about the halfway point to the top third of the painting. And that's just continuing to carry those colors from the sand out into the water. They go from orange, yellow, brown to a like purpley pink. And then we lose the sand color completely and it turns into that aqua blue. So here's that nice transition area where we still have a little bit of the pinks and purples being picked up. All right guys, now we are ready to work on the pineapple. So we're switching to a fine flat tipped brush here. You also could use a round tipped brush, but a flat tip brush will be a little easier to work with. And I'm just starting with some pure primary yellow. I know that my primary yellow is not the thickest color. Uh, it like the pigment is not the most opaque. So I am just starting to layer that up on the part of the pineapple with the sharpest highlight. Just starting to add some yellow there and then we'll let that dry and keep building up our yellow. I'm still using that primary yellow here. I mixed in a little bit of yellow ochre as well and I'm starting to get a little bit more of the shape of, of each little uh, pentagon with the highlight colors. So I'm starting to make little star shapes with my yellow paint here. And so we have that little bit of yellow that goes up in the center and then it goes out on the two sides and then it's like tiny little bottom legs for the star <laughs> at the bottom. And it basically just makes that shape in every one of those little diamond pentagon pieces. And we just continue that all around the pineapple using more burnt sienna and browns on the lower right side of the pineapple and more of that pure yellow on the upper left side of the pineapple. Here I'm just adding the burnt sienna color and I mix a little bit more brown in there towards the bottom and just continuing to fill in each little pentagon with my little star shape. And once I get all of the sienna on the lower right side, I take my paint, I mix it up again and I start to get a medium point between that yellow and that brown color and add that paint on the rows where the two meet. So you can see me blending that color now and I'm just starting to add some more of that to get a little bit less of a range from yellow to brown just to make it a little bit more realistic. Alright, now we have a thick application of paint on the fruit part of the pineapple and we're going to let that dry for a bit and work on the stem. So I started to mix some phthalo green with that aqua blue and cadmium yellow medium and that gives me a really beautiful green uh, but it isn't realistic. <laughs> it's a little bit too on the blue side so then I mixed in some sap green just to bring it a little bit warmer and uh, a little bit more realistic looking for the light that would be on this uh, stalk of uh, leaves. <laughs> and I just add a little highlight on each little section of leaf that would be sticking out from the stem there. 
and it's just like a little line, almost like a little horizontal line at the base. And then we start to get a little bit more of a curved line as we're getting out to the sides and farther up, the line is becoming more of a diagonal, but we really have just more of a line for this highlight. It's not like a full block in of color completely filling in the leaf. We just want a highlight on the little tippy top part of the leaf where light is reflecting and, you know, give, or not reflecting, but bouncing off of that leaf and just brightening it up. Here I'm adding some yellow and white to that green mixture to brighten and warm up that green. As the stems are getting higher up, we're getting a little bit more sunlight reaching them, so the highlight is getting warmer and brighter. And of course, we always have an exception. Uh, here in my reference photo, these little stalks just on this side of the stem uh, were cooler, so I did mix a little more cool green for these few little uh, leaf stem pieces sticking out here. And then I do go back and brighten them up in part two and I warm them up some more as well. But for my base, I used a cooler green for right there. Anytime I want to brighten that up or add another highlight to make it stand out, I'll mix in a little bit more white or yellow and I'll just make a nice little highlight line. And this is where I'm starting to add another shadow to touch up the parts of the stems that were covered up when I was touching up the background. Uh, so I just add another layer of that uh, sap green with phthalo blue and brown, and then I'll add a little highlight over that so that we get our shadow and our highlight. And I'm just taking nice long brush strokes, holding the brush at an angle so I can get a nice thin line. And I'm continuing to create those nice long stocky stem pieces that just kind of come up and out from the center of the pineapple. Again, mixing in more of my yellow and white with my greens to just keep warming up that green. You can add a hint more brown too, and that will make it a little bit more of a realistic color. Makes it like a little bit more earthy. And I'm starting to add highlights to the very tippy top of my pineapple stems. <laughs> I can't pick a word to describe these things. <laughs> now I'm blending some sap green, a little bit of my cadmium yellow medium, and a little bit of burnt umber, trying to get a warmer green that's still a little bit dark, and finishing carrying out those nice long lines for the tippy top of the pineapple And that's about it guys. Once I just finished this part of adding, fixing the stems and then adding a highlight on those stems, that's all we have for part one. So it's already starting to come to life. The background is mostly done. Uh, in part two next week, we are going to finish detailing this pineapple and we're going to add another round of highlights onto the suds in the water. And that just brings that painting to life with that nice highlight, it captures our attention, and it just gets a little bit more detailed and brings it closer to the realistic spectrum. If you're happy with the way your pineapple looks right now, after part one, then you are welcome to be done. You can finish this painting whenever you decide it's finished. That's the beauty of your own art. You get to decide when it's done. Uh, but for me, I like to go with a lot of detail, so we are gonna go back into this in part two next week and add some more detail to the pineapple in the background. Thanks for sticking around, guys. I hope you're having a great week, and as always, happy painting. Bye-bye.